the present tense nationalist view of you know the past i mean the right wing view of the past is that there, there was a prime past which was you know the best the best time india ever had there was it was some time in the past what time in the past was india's prime <laughs> Um, it's a really difficult <laughs> Q&A. I must apologize for this. Um, well, I mean, I think, obviously, in the, in, the, in the Hindutva version of events, the golden age was ancient India when, you know, internet and, and plastic surgery <laughs> and, <laughs> and so on were all came out, and the, and the atomic bomb and the Air Force and the moon mission all, all happened long before Ashoka, but... Uh, uh, but <laughs> no, honestly, your, you know, your, your study of Indian history, which, when do you think India was at its prime best, where there was general harmony around, there was economic prosperity? So, what is true, and Hindutva myths apart, is that this country had an extraordinary millennium between, or 800 years, between about 400 and 1200, when, and I, I mean, I, this, I think, in a sense, hasn't been written enough. You have the whole of Southeast Asia adopting Sanskrit Hindu names. Um, you have the, uh, the churning of the ocean on the back wall of, uh, of Angkor Wat. You have the Ramayana passing all the way down to Java and Malaysia. Uh, and all the kings between, uh, I mean, well, well, Singapore, Singapura, and Gandhara, both Sanskrit names. As far as Kand Kandahar is, 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 is Gandhara, and Singapura is a Sanskrit name. Between those two poles, you have this huge Sanskrit cosmopolis, which, which Sheldon Pollock has written so well about, um, which is converted to Indian ways through Indian soft power rather than through um, conquest. Ditto the whole spread of Buddhism up through. Afghanistan into, South, into Eastern China. And what I think has happened is that the, the two stories, which are one civilizational story of India at its most brilliant, beaming out <coughs> ideas of kingship, plays, technology, ways of, ways of living, the Sanskrit language. Uh, this whole story gets divided into two different departments. You get the story of the spread of Buddhism, which is normally told as a Buddhist story connected with the, the story of the Silk Road. And then you get the story of the Sanskritization of Southeast Asia as something separate, which is studied in a different university department. Or a different, and, put, and the bits are put in a different bit of the museum, um, because, you know, Hindu and, and, and Buddhist. In fact, it's one story of, of India commanding the imagination of, of Asia during this period. And from the worship of Durga in, Kan in, 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 uh, in Ghazni through to um, images of, of Shiva in Central Asian frescoes through to the churning of the ocean in Angkor Wat. This is this period when India's soft power without any military means is... is and, 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 and when um, Huan Sang sets off from China, uh, he says the country in the world most admired by educated people is India. And in a sense, this is what people should be being proud of. <laughs> you know, it's, it's an extraordinary period.